Welcome back to the Boathouse. This week we'll start with a few clips from a national news crew's visit to see Arabella. And then Steve uses his multi-tool to give some shape to the boat. You may want to consult your cardiologist before watching, though. And after that, the house top sides are bolted and glued into place. Phones on silent. Oh. And we're gonna we're gonna move over here. So. Whenever you're ready, guys. This crew from NBC's Today Show put up their story a few weeks ago. The link to it is in the description below if you didn't happen to see it. And it's brought in quite a few new viewers to the channel that we're very happy to have going through the last 237 episodes and almost seven years of building Arabella. I think that I could never figure out all those spinny fingers. What do you think of that camera, Aaron? <laughs> We're almost ready, guys. Uh, Aaron, how old are you? Um, you know. Yeah, I like being nine better. Oh, okay. <laughs> Me too. Right, and you always talk about this as your prologue. Yes. Yep. What do you yeah. mean by that? So the boat to me is not the end all be all. The boat is the vehicle to go do the things and the places that I want to go do them. Any estimate of how many trees went into this? Uh, no, I would say somewhere between 50 and 100. <laughs> I just saw my entire career flash in front of me. <laughs> It seems like so much more than a job. It is. It is. I've never looked forward to going to work before. And this is like, it's, it's fun, it's inspiring. It's, it's inspiring to be told that we're inspiring others. And they say, this channel, this project, the dream, has inspired me to either build my own boat or just to get up in the day. And to hear how that impacts people is keeps me going on a day where I, I you know, maybe I messed up on something and have to go back and fix it and I'm no. really irritated <laughs> once or twice and I don't want to. But, and it's like, no, actually this is really meaningful to a lot of people and that feels like an honor. Uh, see? Yes, Please don't cut through the boat. <laughs> the last thing Steve showed the news crew was getting prepped for the next day's task, putting the shape into the stern post. For years, many commenters have worried about the square shape of the ends of the boat, and for years, Steve has explained that someday they would get the taper that makes them a proper cutwater. What he didn't mention is the tool he planned to use for the job. But if you know Steve, you might have a good guess.
Trying to do a big rip with a cross cut stuff. Well, yeah, do you want to switch this chain? No, I'd have to like totally regrind one. I don't want to do that. Oh, you don't have one. Got it. The next day's job was the far less terrifying task of installing the housetop sides. This whole piece will be fiberglassed very soon along with the cockpit, but first it needs to be bedded and bolted into place. I guess this is the wrong way. We want to put the very short one at the bottom. We want all the extra to come out the top because otherwise we're going to end up sticking out the bottom and being visible. These all need to be switched. We want long threads up. We decided to strip build the house top separately 
from the rest of the boat so that if necessary, hopefully it won't be, we can remove the housetop and access down below, whether we need to pull out a water tank or the engine or something like the refrigerator, it will take work, but it won't, we won't destroy anything to remove the entire housetop. We decided to make that joint um, with bolts and 4200. We did not use um, the pitch because 4200 is a very strong adhesive. It's easily sandable. It's easily paintable. And we like mixing the old with the new. So we went 4200 and 3 8 bolts. Cool. All right, so I said that's a slip fit. <laughs> you guys gotta calm it down. <laughs> we have it, we don't have it. We have it, we don't have it. It fits, it doesn't fit. We should stop for lunch. <laughs> let's, let's have lunch. Where do you want to start? Figure we'll start together at the same place and work opposite directions around the boat okay, and meet so in the I'll middle work. again. Yeah, I'll work. Yeah, that is too thick. Let me let me just dispense it. Let me plug it like that. So then. You know, when it all comes, if you need more, okay. perceive. And if you get a spot that's too thin, like just let me know, I'll come back and add some more. Yeah. Or you can go to a spot that's got too much and scoop up a little extra. Once we put the 4200 down, it's a race against time. So we have to have everything in place to squeeze it down, bolt it in, make it fit. So we all had a job, which was put the 4200 down fast enough evenly not too much not too little we want squeeze out of 4200 but not too much that we'll get it everywhere and ruin things do not eat the 4200 <laughs> Ernest, that's not no, good. It's like frosting. It's good. It's not yogurt. But the only way I learn is by eating it. No. No, Ernest, don't do it. This is Ernest. He enjoys the flavor of linseed oil. He does. He's like keeps finding these spots on the floor that taste like linseed oil and they like, oh, flick it. <laughs> he likes scraps and he's good linseed oil, but only the top shelf. Only top shelf linseed oil. Only the filtered kind. Okay. We are ready to lay it down. Get any more in that tube? Oh, tiny, tiny <laughs> bit? Yeah, just run a bead anywhere that looks like maybe a little light. I just kicked this tube. Right. There's a little... No, this is, that's it on this one. Oh! Will you grab that uh, piece of bark? Oh, okay. Can you grab those 
other that little the little bits. Once the 4200 is down and in place and the house top is down, we still need to get it bolted and squeezed in before it starts to kick off. Once it starts to kick off, it gets gooey and hard to clean up. Unless you stop, don't touch it, come back the next day and cut it. So you have a very thin window of time. Oh, we need the washer to go in. So it's one of these? Gotcha. Didn't we um, have a washer in there? Oh, it came out. out. Okay. Uh, well, let's, let's get it on and done, because it's only going to be harder once we tighten the other one. Can you grab that drill for me, the uh, 3 8 bit right at the step? Ross and George have been super helpful in helping me get ready to fiberglass the house top. To do that, we want to make it as fair and smooth as possible. So we have all this green stuff to help us fairing compound. These pluses are where we'll, we'll add more fairing compounds because the, the smoother the shape before we fiberglass it, the less sanding fiberglass, frankly, we need to do. <laughs> We've routed and sanded all the edges and made it as smooth as possible transition to the outer grub. So the fiberglass can curve around smoother edges. It cannot make hard corners. So this whole process is to make it easier to fiberglass down the road. And we'll do that to all of the pieces that we've, we've glued with cedar strips, the cockpit, the house top, and the hatch covers. I mean, I just can't believe how soft it is, though. Like, I can with my finger and just, my finger, I can just move it around. Which is weird, because the pitch, like, when we got it, is hard. Well, I think there are parts of it that are, uh, whatever, the oil is, the lighter substances will eventually evade out of it, all gas out of it. Okay. And then we'll then leave with more of a, just the carbon. So despite carefully taping the pine decking during the pitching process, the current state of things isn't the clean look that was anticipated. But Steve is hopeful that the cold winter months will harden it enough that when the time comes, it will scrape up nicely. And lastly today, a large crate arrived from a dedicated and talented fan of the show, and everyone on hand was eager to take a look at what was inside. Steve had provided some mahogany from Victoria and a plan for where to put the tie downs on these gorgeous cedar paddle boards that will one day be great for exploring some far flung cove and provide the perfect platform to bring back a fish or two for dinner.
beautiful job. They're gorgeous. Yeah. Yeah, with the mahogany tails and those. That's yeah. uh, that was from Victoria. And then he had the cedar left over from doing. I forget. I think it was like a, a canoe, a kayak, and a runabout or something. What were these tie downs? Are super smart. Yeah, I asked. We t we went back and forth for a while on how to do those. Check out your new paddleboard. Oh wow. Wow. These are unbelievably gorgeous. Yeah. Oh wow, how gorgeous is this? Yeah, he did the, oh, the details on one of them. Yeah. That is so cool. Seriously. I didn't have my glasses on and I wanted to wipe away the oak leaf. <laughs> <laughs> I love them. The honeycomb texture he yeah, put on. Yeah, I mean, that's just like gorgeous. And then he put in these tie downs for us awesome. so that we can lash like a milk crate or Which gear really or whatever cool. onto the deck. Because I've had, I've used um, tie downs that you like, they're, you know, they're, it's like a sticker. Yeah. And they're awful. <laughs> yeah. No, these, they definitely won't hold up to our lifestyle. <laughs> these are perfect. He said perfect. he pull tested these to like 60 pounds or something like that. <sighs> Huge thank you. Who was it? Who did this? Paul. Huge thank you to Paul. Paul D. Thank you, Paul D. <laughs> Hot, honey. Yep. All right, where do we put these for now? They're art. We should put them on the living room walls. I'm not kidding. No, I don't. <laughs> We could go buy some like padded hooks and like 